new beat out. This is the truth by N.O. Domino Beats. I, I like that beat right there. Yeah. But I want to welcome you guys to another episode or another show. Coach Unchained. I'm Coach. Um, let's get this baby started. So, all right. Before we get started with that right there, I would like you guys to hit that subscribe button, man. That subscribe button helped me out. And I had to help, you know, get my name out there a little bit more in the universe out there. Also, guys, hit that like button. That also helps me out. And, um, share this content, you know. If you don't like it, let me know why you don't like it. Send, uh, send me a comment. Let me know what you think. So um, I like comments. So when you send me a comment, I do respond back to them. But, you know, you don't send them. You don't have a question, I won't answer them because I don't know what you want. So you also see me some stuff you want to hear me talk about. So I'm there to do that also. But, uh, you know, then again, you know, I'm on another show also. So you can hear me on there to give me that information also. Also, But, you know, please help subscribe to this channel. All right. All right. Let's get this baby started. All right. First, I want to talk about this injury we had today. You know, this is a little... Another D lineman that we uh, have went down, Bryce Rogers went down uh, today on le- in lemon eleven grill drills, um, but apparently knee injury. Uh, he was caught it off, and with this here, this is the second D lineman that went down this week. Uh, Vincent Taylor was the first to go down early in the week, and uh, we're down two D linemen. But you know, we have. Uh, some still left on the uh, left on the table, so that means this guy has to be replaced with somebody. So we got a spot open to bring that ninety man roster up. So you may see something happen over the weekend or early in the week. Uh, preseason game is this Friday, so that's the first one. So you know we may have somebody in before that happens. But uh, right now, those are the two injuries we have right now. But we still have a couple of guys. You know, you got Dion on the pup list, and uh, you know that's. That's like an injury list, I guess, because he's still recovering. But other guys are back practice. They probably on a lot of duty, a light duty type practice type thing. But you know, like I said, that's the often injury news. All right. Another news we have here. You know, we had a lot of interviews going on today um, after practice. You know, yesterday, or whatever day they were. Uh, first person I want to talk about is Jalen Hawkins. Jalen, uh, very well spoken young man. Uh, third year in this uh, with the Falcons, second year in the DP system. The guy said um, he's uh, very confident in his defense. He can uh, play faster than he has. And um, he feels that the team as a whole uh, are getting the concept of this defense. And um, right now, he's, they say it's leveling up. That means they're all playing as one player, they all doing their job which is the most important thing on defense, do your job. As any type of uh, sports program, you do your job, think good things happen, you know. So, you know, I'm sure there are going to be mistakes, but, you know, you can't make a mistake every play. And, you know, he said, one thing he said, you can make a great play, but what you're going to do on the next play? You got to make a great play every time you're out there. He said, one play doesn't make you. Some people, you know, make think one play make them. There's some people, you know, it can get them paid, one play. But, you know, that's not the way this, this team is thinking. This team is thinking every play, play your best every play. Do your job every play. So if you do your job every play, good things are going to happen. Uh, also, you know, he's talking about how much can – you know, competition there is. He said, this is the most competitive. All these guys are saying, this is the most competitive camp they've had since they've been there. So, you know, that's saying a lot. And, you know, most of these guys are, I think all these guys are looking forward to playing in the preseason game, which coach said everybody will play if they're healthy. So unlike last year when nobody in the starting uh, group played this year, He's doing something different. So, you know, still, like I said, training camp, preseason game, 
still about evaluation. So you still got to evaluate your starters because they wouldn't evaluate last year. You know, he said going into um, last year, they had a, a person who was going to play guard, but he got hurt the week before, um, I think week before the um, training camp. Well, week before the first preseason game, uh, I can't think what his name was, but, you know, J.D. wasn't going to be there last year. But, you know, that's another story in itself. But, um, yeah, man, we also had A.J. that talk. He's talking about the swag that the defensive back has, you know, and how they're able to play fast and, you know, and how the offense is giving them good work and how they're giving the offense good work. So it's all about the competition. He said, with the competition they have, it's preparing them for, you know, the team they're going to play. He said, having guys that are that big and you're able to defend them, it's going to only help them out much better. Who else? So we had Kyle Pitts that spoke. And, you know, what else can you say about Kyle Pitts except his uh, – you can tell he's mature. He's matured from one year to the next. He's more confident in his speaking. He's always a decent speaker, but he's more confident in what he's saying. And uh, I think teams gonna have a, their hand full more than they had last year against Kyle Pitts. And uh, you know, talking about the other person that tied in room, we talking about Felipe Frank. Felipe Frank had a very, very strong chance of making this team as a tight end. How many tight ends coach is going to keep? I don't know. But he has an advantage being that third-string quarterback also. So you're going to probably see him in this preseason game playing both positions. So, you know, that's a upper hand on a lot of guys. So that's why you come to play these games. You know, don't settle for one position when you come to the pros, man. If you want to make a team, hey, tell coach you can do something else or hope them ask you to do something else because they want you on the team. Just like Avery Williams went from – then DB, then he's at running back. So, hey, keep your eyes open, man. Don't settle for one position, especially if you're not playing and you have a very small chance of making the team. So that's something that, you know, most guys need to look at. Try to play something else. If you know you're not going to make it to the top playing that position you're at. So, but, uh, but yeah, from Lee Pay Franks, they saying he looks good at tight end. So, what can we say? He looks good at tight end. He's a six, 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 seven, whatever he is. He's a big man, and he has good speed. And uh, you know, he's learning from Kyle Pitts some little stuff. He's learning from I guess he's learning from everybody about something. And uh, these guys on this team are very coachable. You can tell they're all coachable because they're all learning from each other, and they're learning from. Coaches, they're learning from the vets and they're teaching the younger guys. So it shows how tight niche this uh, team is this year. You know, that's the way you want your team to be. Everybody depend on each other to help each other out when things are rough for them. Uh, that's like being mentally strong. So be able to adapt to every situation that's uh, thrown upon you. So. That's another thing I think Jalen talked about. He said how the coaches put them through different scenarios. And uh you know, when you think you got something going down, you keep playing until that, you know, to that final whistle. So especially when you got a running quarterback, he said having our two quarterbacks help them out a whole bunch when they come down to those running quarterbacks because he said both Felipe and Marcus are pretty fast guys. And before you know it, you know, you're covering a DB, they're already running downfield. You, know, you got to change your whole angle of thinking because, you know, once they pass that line of scrimmage, they can't throw the ball. You got to go make that tackle. So, you know, that's just part of football. But, you know, I hope these guys do great. Uh, who else do we have here? We talked about, you know, the wide receiver. Oh, here yeah, no, our wide receiver. You got Drake London. You got uh, Edwards. You got a lot of good wide receivers out there. Don't know how many we're going to keep, but, you know, they say all these guys are flashing. They're all doing their job, you know. So, but you know, the handful it's gonna be Drake London. I'm calling it now. You know, I ain't put no money on it, but I'm calling it now. Uh, Drake London will be your rookie of the year for the offensive side of football. You know, when you look at the draft, you look at all these speedy guys and so on and so on and so on and so on. 
but you know they just got speed, but they can't run. You know what Drake has? He has decent speed, but he has great footwork, and uh, he has a great catch radius, and uh, he's humble. He's not the flashy guy, you know, and that's probably why a lot of people didn't like the pick at first because he wasn't the flash, the splash, the flashy, splashy pick. But this kid is he can ball, you know, so. So people be aware, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, uh, Cordell, whoever, man, these running backs, you got Tyler Algier. They said he was running people over today in practice. So, man, man, it's that competitive edge, man. Get that competitive edge, anything's possible. You feel like you can compete, and the, man, the coaches are putting to make them compete the whole practice. You know, last weekend they had to fight, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That just shows the competitiveness they're having in these practices. That's not a fighting fight. That means you're not really competing. I, that's just my personal opinion. If there's a fight in practice, especially early, that means you're competing. But um, that's from there. Then we had Marlon Davidson who talked. How he said he's changed the way he thinks. You know, after being injured the last couple of years and being sick the last couple of years, he said he's worked on his body and he's ready to play. He's ready to prove to people that. He's a football player. So we're all ready to see that. You know, you can tell he worked on his body because he looked a lot thinner and he says his legs are under him now. So let's just hope that's what the case is. If he can do anything, he can play 80% of what he played at Auburn. He would be a uh, decent uh, person for us. But I think he's I think he's, he's trying, trying to get that, be at 100%. If he's at 100%, he's going to be a beach for us. He's going to help us on that D-line. Uh, our DNs, they said they're working hard. So the DNs are doing their job out there. They're, you know, getting a good rush. The rush is on the watch call. But, you know, because you can't hit the quarterback, you can't say it's going to be a sack or not because you can't hit the quarterback. But the coach, you know, he's, he's, he's rating, you know, he can see what's the sack or not. But they continue to play because you hit the quarterback. So, but um, this – Friday, we're going to see how these guys work. So, you know, Friday's, Friday's the day, man. So everybody be looking out for that Friday night game. Everybody be ready for it because I'm looking forward to it. All right. So now we're going to get done with the coach press conference from, from the uh, press conference from Coach Smith. One question Coach Smith was asked that I stuck out to a lot of people because it was, you know, that Tor, I don't know who asked it, but Tori McElmay reported this. They asked uh, who's going to be the starter on the old line. Coach Smith uh, said this, and I quote to a degree, when it comes to making a final decision about the old line, he's willing to take as long as it takes, as long as he needs to, to get a fair assessment of this uh, of the guys he has. So in other words, he's saying when he feels comfortable uh, with the guys he have in there, um, he will let us know. But with that being said, you know, according to practice and where all the reports are, uh, that you have already have four guys. The only thing that you see different on a regular basis are the centers. You have Hennessy and um, Dolman rotating. So those are the two guys right now that doesn't look uh, uh, finished. But uh, what you've been having the last couple of practices has been uh, McGarry and Matthews has been at your tackles. And you had Lindstrom and Wilkinson at your guards. And Wilkinson's been there mainly, supposedly, don't know how, but uh, they're saying that uh, Mayfield has had a, had back issues. And that's why he hasn't been – I ain't gonna say that's why he had to been there, but he's had back issues, so it's it's limited him for doing what he needs to do to be on that first team. So, but uh, coach said he's a strong kid, he's a tough kid, and uh, he's gonna work through it. And <clears throat> I'm not sure he's gonna play this weekend, but you know, we're gonna see. That's all we can do. We're gonna see who's gonna be playing. We get a good assessment ourselves 
we will watch this game on uh, Friday night. But um, with all that right there, man, that's been a little short video I wanted to do. Just talk about different things. And we know what's going on in the camp. It's almost it's practice. And they're competing. You know, nothing major has happened in practice. But, you know, I'm just giving you reports of main stuff that I think are kind of important to what's going on in uh, training camp. So, but um, again, please subscribe to this channel, hit that like button, and also share this content. And I'm looking forward to the next video, which is tomorrow when I'll be on with the regulators. Uh, and that's 12.05 uh, Eastern time. And uh, check us out, check the regulator shit out tomorrow. And um, like I said, I'm Coach, from Coach Unchained. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for uh, tuning in to me and uh, give you a listen to go out with. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody.